Hey guys, I've made a lot of mistakes in Lightburn, and after making my first Lightburn tutorial on this YouTube channel, I've realized that a lot of us tend to make the same mistakes when we're just starting out. So in this video, we're gonna run through eight pretty typical mistakes that people tend to make when they're beginners with Lightburn. Let's go ahead and get started with mistake number one. The first one is a classic, and that is trying to copy somebody else's power and speed settings for your own laser. And there's a couple of reasons why this usually doesn't work. Let's say you have an 80 watt CO2 laser from Omtech and you ask me for my power and speed settings. Well, I usually run a 20 watt Xtool D1 Pro, and so I can pretty much guarantee that my settings aren't going to work for you because there's just such a huge power difference between those two lasers. Now, to be fair, you could find somebody that has the exact same laser with the exact same power as yours, but I would still only view this as a start point because there's just too many variables. For example, the temperature and humidity in your shop might be different than theirs, and maybe you get your materials from a different supplier, and when you're looking at the end result of an engraving or a cut job on a laser, these types of things can actually make a pretty big difference. And so personally, I would always wanna run my own power and speed test grid just to make sure I'm getting the perfect settings for what I'm trying to do, and if this kinda goes over your head and you're not sure how to use or create one of these test grids, then don't worry, I actually made an in-depth tutorial on this, and I'll put a link to it at the end of this video. Mistake number two is a quick one, but it's also pretty infuriating. And that's when you're over here and you're using one of these design tools. Let's just say you're using the rectangle tool to create something here. And so you're, you're creating and then you make your first one and you decide, okay, great. Now I want to select it and move it around. And you try to do that, but then you end up just creating more and more rectangles, right? So this can be really frustrating, but all you have to do to get back to your selection tool is you could just click it, but I find it to be faster a lot of the times just to hit the escape key twice. So hit it twice, and then I'm ready to click, select, and move this around. Mistake number three is what I call lazy layers. And there's a couple of things that go into this. First of all, the best practice, which maybe you've heard actually, is to put the engrave layer always above your cut layer. And the reason for this is sometimes when you're engraving, things can get shifted around. And so if you actually do the cut first, you could get things a little bit off center when you get to the engraved portion. So put your engraves first, and if you have yours out of order right now, it's pretty easy. All you have to do is select it and then move it using these arrows. So as you can see, my engrave is coming first, so this is the appropriate order. And another tip that I'll throw in here about these layers that could save you a lot of time is if you happen to have a type of material that you use pretty frequently in your shop for your laser, you could have a designated cut and engrave layer for them. And the benefit of doing this is if you use them consistently, Lightburn will remember the settings that you have against those layers. So for example, let's say I come in here and create this engrave. I could haphazardly just throw it on a layer and say, okay, it's going over here. Let me just find my, my settings that maybe I have in a library or written down somewhere and punch them in here. Or if I know it's on that material that I use a lot, I could create this engrave text and then I could just come over here and click on my designated layer and we can see it's got the label quarter inch maple engrave and it also has remembered my, my settings from previous jobs. Mistake number four is another one that can be really frustrating if you don't know how to fix it, and that is losing these windows over here on the right hand side. So the, each window has one of these little red headers like this, and if you're messing around with things, moving things around, or just accidentally, you could lose something like this laser window that has all of your key, start, stop, and frame buttons in here. So let's just make that go away. Now the question is, how do we get it back, <laughs> right? Because we need it in order to run our laser. And it's actually really simple. You just go up here to your uh, existing red, red header here that's still there, and then you right click it, and it's going to give you an option for all of the possible windows you could have over here. The one we just hid is called laser, so I'm just gonna click that, and it comes back. So that's a pretty simple fix. And uh, if you didn't know this already, there's also a little option here for every one that you have opened, this is how you can click between them by just selecting them there. So that's helpful to know, I think. Mistake number five is definitely one that I've been guilty of myself, and that is neglecting the preview tool. If you don't know already, the preview tool is this little computer screen button up here, and you can open it, and it allows you to basically fast forward through what your basic outline of your job is going to look like and how it's going to run. And it's a good idea to at least open this up and just scroll to the end to see what everything is gonna look like before you run your job. And this is one that if I had used it more consistently, I probably would have saved myself a decent bit of wasted material. So learn from my mistake and make Make sure you always look at the preview before actually running a job on your laser. 
Oh, and one more quick tip about the preview tool. One thing that you can look at in particular is this total time estimated. That's basically the run time of the, the job that's expected in the preview. Uh, if you open this up and it looks like way different than you would expect it to be, that can be a red flag that something in your job is wrong. And that's actually something that has saved me from running a job that wasn't set up correctly in the past. So that's one thing that you can look at in particular just as a tip. Mistake number six is one that I think a lot of people run into when they first start using Lightburn, and that is what I call the center screen trap. So if you're in here and you're working on a design, but you're trying to move around, let's say we want to move to the right hand side of the working area, the first thing you're probably going to do intuitively is try to click and drag. But if you do that, it's just going to do the selection tool. So it's not going to take you there. And so if you actually want to move around, the sloppy solution that I first started using was just to use a scroll wheel on a mouse and scroll in and then move it and <laughs> scroll over here. But that's not really the best solution. What you can actually do to move around the way that you would intuitively want to, which is with a click and drag, is just simply to hold the space bar. If you hold the space bar, you get this little hand and then you can just click and drag wherever you want around the workspace and it helps out a lot. Mistake number seven is one that I think that people can fall into regardless of their experience level with Lightburn. So whether you're brand new or have actually been using it for quite some time, and this is definitely one that I've fallen into myself, and that is over-engineering a design to fit your favorite tools. And so personally, just to give you a super basic example of this, I really like to use the weld and Boolean subtract uh, features, which are over here on the uh, left-hand side right there if you don't know where those are. And basically what that allows you to do is something like this where you're going to uh, add or subtract a shape from another shape. And so what this could allow you to do, let's say we want to make a triangle. Well, if I'm just trying to use my favorite tools, what I might end up doing is saying, okay, I'm just going to overlap a rectangle with another rectangle and then subtract one from the other in order to get a rectangular shape. So I'd have this side and then just do the same thing on the other side. Or if I just pause for a moment and thought about how can I make this design and maybe thought about and researched some new tools that maybe I haven't used before, I might find that there's an easier way of doing it. So for example, maybe I decide I'm just going to try the pencil tool to make my triangle and then I've learned, oh, okay, I can actually do that pretty easily and uh, make my triangle that way instead. So you get the idea. Sometimes it's better just to spend a little bit of time planning and learning in advance before you start designing so that you just don't always default to your favorite tools even if it's not the best way of doing something. And for the grand finale, mistake number eight is probably the single biggest roadblock that I kept running into when I first started using Lightburn and that is not being able to frame or align my designs in Lightburn with my material in the real world. So I was doing things like running my laser head into the rails or trying to do an engrave, but having it off center of my material. And so when I finally figured out how to do this correctly, I put three different methods for how to do it in my Lightburn 101 tutorial, which I'll put a link to right here. So if you need help with this, don't worry. You can go to that video there and then just go ahead and skip to the 24 minute and 30 second mark, which is where I start explaining how to do this framing and alignment stuff with a few different methods. But if you actually need more help with what we talked about in the beginning of the video, which is power and speed test grids, then go check out this video over here instead, which is where I do a deep dive into those, how to use them, how to read them. So hopefully one of these two videos will help you further. I'll see you over there. Bye now.